All right, hey there students. In today's video, we'll be talking about how to do a ratio analysis. We're gonna be using a real world company here, Apple Inc. Talking about three categories of ratios, liquidity ratios, profitability ratios, and leverage ratios. We're talking about what they are, how to calculate each ratio, and what that means for the financial health of the company. We're we'll referencing statements, the income statement, and the balance sheet throughout. We'll do a full financial analysis of Apple Inc. So let's get into it. Okay, so to start off here, liquidity ratios. Well, what that really represents is how well can Apple pay off its current obligations or its current liabilities. That's what that means. And there's three main types here we're going to go through and talk about what each of them means. So the first one is called the current ratio, and it's taking your current assets divided by your current liabilities. What that really means is this, is how well can the current assets of Apple pay off its current debt? And the formula, as you can see, is current assets over current liabilities. If we jump over to the statements, we're going to look at our balance sheet, right? Taking our total current assets, which is 134836. So jump back over. We're going to calculate it here equals 134836 divided by our current liabilities, which is right here, 125481. All right, and we have a ratio of 1.0746, and I'm going to actually increase the size here so you can see it really easily. Okay, so we have a ratio here of 1.0746. Now, what does that really mean? Well, if we evaluate it, it's actually positive, meaning Apple can sufficiently pay off its current obligations with current assets because we have a ratio greater than one. And that's good. That means there's sufficient amount of assets to pay off its current obligations. And obviously that's good because that means that they can actually have debt, but they can still have assets that can sufficiently pay it off. If it, if it can't pay it off, if it's under one, that's not a good thing, but it actually is. So that's positive here. Okay. So moving on here, let's talk about the quick ratio or what they call the acid test ratio. And as you can see, it's very similar to the current ratio but it's not gonna take in all current assets into account. So we have cash plus current marketable securities plus accounts receivable. So it's actually not gonna take into account like supplies or inventory, things like that. This is more of what they call a quick ratio. It's evaluating just a select group of assets, the most important current assets, how well can they pay off current liabilities? So we jump over here, we're just gonna be looking for cash, current marketable securities and accounts receivable. Let's take a look. So we have cash and cash equivalents for 34940. So let's go ahead and plug in. So we have equals 34390. We'll do a parentheses around that. Or 34940. Plus Go back over here, marketable securities, 27699. So 27699 plus, lastly, accounts receivable net, 26278. Then we're going to divide that whole thing by our current liabilities of 125481. So we get 0.70. Eight, six. And I'm going to go ahead and format this just like this one. Okay, so we actually have a 0 0.7086, which means the quick assets, or what they call the most liquid assets, can really only pay off 70% of the current liabilities. So the, the most liquid assets can only pay off roughly 70% of current obligations. And honestly, it needs to be around one to one. So this is less than one. So it's a less than one. So what that means really is Apple needs more liquid assets on their balance sheet to help pay off 
current debt. So they need to focus on getting more cash, more accounts receivable, things that are more liquid to allow them to pay off current obligations. So let's go ahead and talk about what they call working capital. Working capital is just taking your current assets and subtracting your current liabilities to figure out what's left over, right? After you take out your current liabilities, how much do you really have left in equity that uh, is sufficient for the company to hold on to here? So, so let's go ahead and find our current assets. We'll go ahead and open up a, a formula here, go over here, and we have 134. 836, and we're going to subtract out our current liabilities, which is 125481. And we get 9355. Let's go ahead and make this bigger, and we don't need all those zeros. So that's actually very positive because they have um, a good amount of assets, current assets left over. So after reducing the current obligations, from current assets, they have a remaining balance of 9355 in current assets, which allows the company to um, basically have sufficient amount of assets left over. Left over for further growth. So that's a very good thing. And, and again, 9355, five, that's not 9,355. Five. That's actually in millions. So, but we're just keeping the numbers really simple for this video. All right. So that right there takes care of liquidity ratios. Again, how well can Apple pay off its current obligations? There are more ratios, but these are the most important ones. Current, quick, and working capital. So let's jump in now to profitability ratios. So profitability ratios really is just how well a company makes use of its assets to generate profitability and create value for shareholders. So a lot of this will have to do with the income statement. How well can it generate income? As it says here, to make use of its assets and create value for shareholders. So first off, operating profit margin. We're going to take our operating profit and divide it by net sales. So let's take a look here at our income statement and get this formula to equals. And let's go over here, find our operating profit. So we're now we're looking at our income statement for the year 2021. We go down, operating income or operating profit is 108,949. We're dividing it by our net sales, which is 365,817. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing as we did up here of 0.2978. So actually, really th anything over 15% is actually good. So we're around 29% here, as you can see, 0.2978. So that means um, that managers are managing the operating expenses well in comparison to the net sales generated by the company. Uh, this number is anything over 15% uh, is good and costs are managed efficiently. The operating costs of that business of Apple. So they're actually doing fairly well there. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So that's a very good number, 29% or 0.29, very solid. So let's move on here and let's take a look at net profit margin. So net profit margin, taking your net profit, the final number, net income divided by net sales. It's, kind of, it's very similar to this one here, but uh, it's taking it at the very, very, very bottom, as you'll see. So we're taking our very bottom after tax amount, very bottom here, 94680 and dividing it by our net sales of 365817. That's 25%, that is exceptional, very good. Really anything over around 5%, five to 10% net profit uh, margin is exceptional. So that means that they're taking home basically after everything, 
their profit margins is 25%. So the profit margins are 25%, which is exceptional, meaning, once again, managers of the business are managing costs extremely efficiently and are generating, uh, I guess you can say generating large profits from their assets, which fuels future growth and expansion for Apple because they have a lot of money left over after all of their expenses. It, that's really what it is at the end of the day. And that's very solid. Over five to 10% is very good. And that's near 25%, nearly 26%. Okay, so let's move on here. Lastly, for profitability ratios, return on assets. It's kind of what it sounds like. How much income are they earning for every dollar of asset? taking your net profit divided by total average assets. So that's gonna be important here. So we're gonna take it equals, we're gonna do, you're gonna do our net profit, which is going to be 94680. And actually we're gonna be dividing it by, and I wanna put bigger parentheses here. This is important. Actually, this will be a bracket. We're dividing it by the average total assets. So what that means, if you look at the assets here, we have two years, 2021, 2020. We're gonna take the sum of these two numbers and divide it by two to get the average. So we take 351002 plus 323888. And we're dividing it by two around and bright. Let's see if this works. Okay, no. Make sure I got the formula right. I think we need to take these brackets out. There we go. Okay, no brackets. Okay, so we get to a 0 0.0701, meaning about 7%. So that what that really means is they're earning about 7 cents for every dollar of asset they have. And that's actually very good. If over 5%, this is a healthy asset or healthy profit per dollar of asset ratio. Basically, it means that they're generating a good amount of profit for every asset. So those assets are working really hard for them. So the assets are working hard for Apple generating healthy profit, again, also for future growth. Okay, so last here, leverage ratios. And that what that means really is how much debt the company is using to keep itself running. Now, every company needs debt, as you probably know. But if they're using too much debt to run its company, that, that can actually be a bad thing. It just depends on what they're using it for. So we're going to look at two ratios, the debt ratio and the debt to equity ratio. So the debt ratio, pretty simple, taking your total debt, or total liabilities divided by total assets. And that's gonna figure out really what's the percentage of debt that's being used for every dollar of asset here. So let's take a look. Okay, let's take a look at the statements here and figure out our total debt to total assets. We're gonna take equals, look at our total debt and we have total liabilities here of 287912. We're dividing it by our total assets, which is 351002. And let's go ahead and format this correctly. So we got around 0.82, and that's actually um, not very good. <laughs> Anything 0.4 or lower is good, but 0.6 or higher means that the company is leveraging too much debt to run its operations. And this leads to issues with creditors, like higher interest rates. You know, they are evaluated as higher risk for lending because the ratio of their debt to assets is very high. 
They're having to use a lot of debt to run their operations. And that might be for future growth, right? If they have a lot of future, um, as future projects going on, right? In the future, they might need a lot of debt right now to fuel that expansion, right? Maybe they're not using enough of their profits and they're not dumping it back in for further investment. So there could be a few reasons for that. But right now, that is very high. We, we really want it to be around 0 0.4. 0 0.4 is healthy and it's about 0 0.8203. So they need to pay off more debt, basically, because that's also going to lead to a lot higher interest as, as well, right? The more debt they have. Lastly, debt to equity is taking the comparison of the total debt to the total equity of the company, really figuring out the value or the, the amount that they're borrowing compared to what um, they have in equity for their shareholders. So let's take a look at that. Oh, and let me jump right back here. Do equals, so total debt is going to be 287,912. We're dividing it by total equity is right there, 63090. Okay, so right here. Okay, so 4.5635 is pretty high. We're looking really anywhere between one and two for a ratio of total debt to total equity. So this is a very high debt to equity ratio, meaning Apple is relying heavily on debt to finance its growth compared to financing through um, shares, issuing shares of stock. Because that's another way they can finance growth is by issuing shares of stock to their investors. Investors purchase, they can finance growth. And they're really relying too much on debt compared to equity. So uh, this is very high, and Apple should consider paying off debt and using equity to finance future growth, or using more equity. That's risky, right, for more lend, uh, people lending more money to them because they're seeing such high debt ratios. They're using so much leverage. They call it over-leveraged uh, to finance future growth, and uh, there needs to be a better balance here uh, for Apple. So there it is, full evaluation uh, with those three main categories for Apple. Overall, I would say they're doing fairly well. You can see how well they're doing in profits. As far as the amount and the percentage of profits they're using for every asset generated for their, um, they're managing their expenses very well, as you can see. Uh, some of their, uh, their quick ratio could be better, right? They need to be, uh, like, like earlier, right? They're having too much debt that's financing, and so they need to have more assets to pay off that current debt. And lastly, the overall debt ratios, they are really over leveraged on both the debt ratio and the debt to equity ratio. They need to be using more equity to finance their growth. And that can help with their lowering their interest rates and help with uh, lowering their risk, right? A lender's risk. So lenders can lend them more money if they have better balance of their debt. So hopefully this video was helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, this is a ratio analysis we did uh, in Excel for Apple. If you enjoyed this, definitely let me know because I can do more ratio analysis of different companies. I think that'll help you understand better how to evaluate the financial health of a company. So once again, thanks for watching and uh, make sure to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.